it's absolutely amazing folks what that hive alive can do for the longevity of your bee syrup or bee food um i'm gonna guess it was five or six weeks ago that i mixed up this five gallon bucket of uh sugar syrup one to one sugar syrup and we're right on the border of probably getting ready to switch over to two to two but i've still got a good quarter of a bucket here of this syrup and i took a lid off of it you know kind of forgot that i had added the hive alive to it and i expected to see a little bit of mold or mildew in the syrup that's not at all the case the only thing we got in there is some small fragments of leaf because i used a twig to stir it up um, every time i've opened the bucket so um, a little bit of debris in there but none of that's going to be harmful to the bees so what i've been doing is i've been filling up these flower feeders and doing a lot of open feeding um, and uh, that extra feeding is going to help build up the reserve food stores going into winter um, you know it's very important that our bees have the appropriate amount of food stores um, as they go into winter and here in Ohio I like to see 80 to 90 pound hives on single deeps um, 10 frame colonies so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use these bottles get them filled up and continue feeding so yeah I've just been sticking it down the bottle down in the syrup letting it fill up on its own um, does make a big sticky mess all over my hands but at the same time what it's also doing by coating the outside of the bottle is it helps the bees find the syrup and know where to go to eat. Now with the Hive Alive, have you seen um, the research video on it? The studies show that the longer it's present in the hive, the more beneficial it is for the bees. Um, their health that is so a couple different benefits to using the hive alive in your syrup you get the added benefit for your bees and the longevity of your syrup um, you don't have to use it up in a week and I like that because you know when I plan to mix syrup and use it all up in a week's time something always comes up and then when I make it back to start feeding again well my syrup's all bad so I gotta dump it and remix it and you know making up this syrup isn't necessarily something I can do for free because of the cost of sugar so it all adds up folks so we've got these three filled up I've got three more to fill up but I'll do that here after a bit what we want to do now is get these all set up for the bees and I'll show you what that looks like sorry about the wind folks I'm using my cell phone for today's video um, so here's the feeders all set up. Now, I don't have the cap on all of them. Um, this is what I mean by the cap. You can see this was removable. And what you're able to do is stick some pollen substitute up there. And the bees can go up under here and get pollen substitute. Um, we've got moose here helping me today. Um, ladybug's around. I'm sure she'll be here in the videos somewhere for those uh, who've been asking how ladybug's doing. So anyway, you can see the difference with the cap on and the cap off. But down here at the bottom is where all the good stuff is, and that's where the syrup will be collected by the bees. I know there's a lot of people that are firm believers um, against open feeding. But, uh, I don't know, I've had my experiences of going around opening hives. Hey, the syrup's not for you. You don't need hive alive, moose. It's not going to be beneficial to you. Um, I've had my experiences with both options, going through and filling feeders in each colony. Um, and this is by far a lot less work. And all of my colonies do gain adequate weight from feeding with this. So I don't believe in my own mind, um, at least with the evidence of my colonies gaining weight, that there's really much of any robbing. Now, there is still going to be a few yellow jackets and a few hornets lurking around the feeders. But tis the season for that. So um, 
All we can do is keep our entrances reduced, and if we got robbing screens, put them on our colonies. Um, but that's what the feeders look like, folks, and it's making a huge difference for me. Ladybug, come here. Everybody's been asking how you've been doing, girl. Sit. 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 Be a pretty girl. Moose, sit. Sit. Stay. 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 How you guys been? Been doing good? That, you been doing good? Yeah. Moose is coming around pretty good, huh? Yep. And Ladybug's bubbies. They have all kinds of fun. Ladybug's still king of the roost, though, aren't you, Ladybug? Yeah, her's king of the roost. This is her place. And then comes Moosey. Huh. And Moosey's and Ladybug. Yep. American bullies, folks. Gotta love them. Great, great dogs. Great dogs, huh, Ladybug? Yeah. Moose, you leave the hive alive alone, Moose. Moose. Moose is very uh, childlike, like a toddler. You gotta tell him six times before he listens. And he's, um, he's very curious about everything. Everything. You're going to go do some grazing. And Ladybug's going to sit here and get her lovings. You got anything you want to say to the folks, Ladybug? They've been asking about you. A lot of people have been asking, where's Ladybug? Where is the Ladybug? Moose. Moose. You don't need the cow bone, buddy. He thinks he needs it. Hey. I was kind of hoping that would put some uh, minerals back in the soil over there, Moose, in the flower bed. <laughs> you leave that bone alone. All right, let's finish this video up for the folks, okay, Moose? Yeah, they're very curious about bees. They want to learn. They want to learn what they need to do to get their bees ready for winter. Let's put the bone back, Moose. Let me have it. Let me have it. Yeah, that's a nice bone there, Moose. No, no. Let's leave it in there. No, no. No, no. Moose, thank you. So, 2022. How did it do for me? Well, things got busy, as always. Never seems to fail. I make plans for my bees and, and the things I'm going to do with them this year to continue growing my operation. And then things fall apart on the beef operation so I've got to go and concentrate on it and therefore the bees get a little bit neglected from time to time and um, as you know a lot of you know anyway that I sell nucleus colonies and I don't push a whole lot of honey production well what happened this year is right after um, I sold my last few nukes for the season I didn't really get to make the splits that I wanted so um, my number of nukes um, for sale next spring 2023 is going to be very very limited and I hate that but you know it is what it is you know you're looking at a, a bee yard here that's just loaded with colonies but um, not all of them have bees in it um, out of all of these colonies and what you see running down the side over there that's all stored equipment with the exception of this five over five frame nuke here on the end and that is a booming colony um, besides that, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of these have um, bees in them. So, I don't know. The good thing um, about the double boxed or the five over fives is, is if I take those into spring and, you know, have some customers that don't really care if the queen has overwintered, they would just rather have a nucleus colony. So if I take those doubles, like you take Stan, Stan and Sue here, the two-tone blue hives. Um, you take them into spring and start building them up. And then you separate the boxes and you give um, the box without a queen, another mated queen. Boom, you just turn two colonies or two nukes and the four nukes to sell. And of course, two of those will not be overwintered but they will give you two more colonies to sell. So that is helpful there. But some of these nukes, well, a good majority of them are just singles. You look here, down there, there's three of them. 
Um, we got another double back there in the back row. But just not the numbers I want this year. But you know, you've got to uh, you got to do what you got to do. And when you're needed elsewhere, something's going to get neglected. So I spoke about my nuke yard. Um, this is on the other side of my property, good 150 yards away from the nucleus colonies. But this is my little apome um, beginning. Um, for those of you who have followed me all year long, um, you're familiar with the fact that I just started using some apome equipment this year. And, you know, I can't say anything bad about it. Um, to this point, I am extremely happy with how these colonies have done. <laughs> If you remember back, this colony had a queen issue and needed requeened. This one's been doing great right out, out of the gate, right from the beginning when I dumped the package in. And this was a split here that I made in this seven framer. All of these colonies doing really, really well. Now, if you're new to my channel, what we have here is a wooden box with the Apame Woodhive Upgrade Kit. Now, the box is not included, but what you do get is an Apame bottom board, the two feeders, under the top lid here and you get the top insulated cover or lid with the vents in the front and the back um, and then also and then if you extend the kit and, and get the larger kit of the two um, it comes with the latches to latch down the lid and all that good stuff so very very handy kit now the advantage to having an apame bottom board is on the back We have a pollen trap that we can put in here. We've also got a removable tray, which look is getting water into it. How did that happen? I think what we'll do is empty that out and watch after the next rain and see how that's, if that's changed or if that's filled back up. Now if it's filled back up with some water, then I'm gonna have to assume it's getting in these vents somehow because the lid completely encloses the top. It's either that or it's dripping down and landing on here and then running in. I'm not sure, but I will be keeping a close eye on that because moisture will kill bees in the winter. And it don't matter how much food you got in there and the genetics, that does makes no difference. Um, water will kill bees. Moisture is deadly. Cold, bees have no problem with it. They've been handling cold for many, 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 many years. Let's check this one. Well, somehow or another, we had some bees get in there. And I don't know if it was uh, because this lid wasn't closed. Oh, maybe they're going through that insert and I need to plug it off. That could very well be it. And that insert there is one I just installed recently to try uh, my vaporizer. And that was effective, but the effectiveness, the effectiveness is going to vary depending on how plugged up the bottom board is on your colony. Anyway, folks, that's my half of my colonies. Absolutely adore these boxes and the equipment. Um, Top-notch stuff here, folks. I got some exciting news to share with you all. For a few weeks now, I've been working with some people to put together my very first beekeeping book, and that will be available to you all in the near future. Um, if you would like to stay in the loop of this book and get progress updates, I'm gonna leave a link down in my video description. It'll take you over to a form where you enter your email address and answer a couple questions. From there, you will be updated um, with book progress as it comes to me or as it becomes available. So pretty exciting news and I'm glad to share it with you all. The secret is no longer on my shoulders.